he's fat, he's hairy, he's pretty damn sexy. <laughs> it's Daniel Lambert! Woo! How are you doing, Kelly Brewer? Yeah! Lovely stuff. Good. You seem like a good energy, Canterbury. I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Good. Good, good. But you're back again, Canterbury. We're back again in the Mooring Cafe bar. Woo! Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which we clearly don't care about. <laughs> Fuck the venue. No. Uh, <laughs> no. We're, it's great to be back. And uh, as, always, as always, let's give it up for our amazing bar staff tonight. Ollie and Louise, everyone. Woo! Lovely stuff. Any words of wisdom, Ollie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> great start then, Canterbury. Brilliant. Uh, as always, uh, 2.15 on the same cocktails, 3 for 10 on house beers, and always, come on country with me. That's so risky! I thought that would work, no. So we have, we have a special whiskey, that we've actually raised about £100, haven't we? Uh, you guys, 100 over 150. About 150 quid, that's pretty good! Yeah! Destroying cats and one glass of whiskey at a time, eh? Lovely stuff. And uh, we, you want to try and finish the bottle tonight? Is that is that what's going down? Yeah, go on then. Go on, show us how much is left, Ollie. Ooh. So, Canterbury, that is how much we've got left. Ooh. All right, looking at you, I see a lot of whiskey drinkers, all right? And I also see a lot of people... I also see a lot of people that want to cure cancer. So... If you want to drink a little bit of whiskey and cure cancer, this is one way of doing it. Um, brilliant. That's, it's getting old now, isn't it? I should, I should lose that bit. Brilliant. Um, lovely stuff. Lovely stuff. And we have we have uh, thirteen amazing acts for you tonight. Oh, don't sound too excited. Lovely stuff. We've, as always, have some UKC Stand Up Comedy Society legends. And tonight we are very lucky to have two people who have never performed here at the Stour. Whoa. No, no expenses hold. Three. We know how to have a good one. Lovely stuff. So, double checker, checker, Tarzan, whatever. I like it. What's your name? Uh, Reese. Reese. What'd you do, Reese? Uh, well, I'm a barista and a student. A barista and a student. What'd you study? Uh, drama and literature. So. I my fault, but not really. <laughs> useful for coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so a useful degree, yeah, as per <laughs> all degrees. Um, what do you plan on doing with your drama and literature degree? Uh, take a gap here across the world and then take the cinema master's like this. <laughs> drama students, everyone. <laughs> gap here. That's the, that's the consensus we've come to. Brilliant. Are you looking forward to tonight? Yeah. Who have you come to support? You hear me, Tommy? Yeah. We love a bit of Tommy, don't we, Canterbury? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Tommy. Um, well, I, I, I hope you enjoy yourself, Reese. I hope you enjoy yourself. Um, you, uh, madam in the back, nice jumper. What's your name? Imi. How would you do, Imi? History. And what do you plan to do with your history degree? A gap here. Brilliant. <laughs> um, cheers to me. Lovely stuff. Uh, great conversation. Uh, thanks, Canterbury. Uh, uh, Frosted Tips. Uh, how you doing? All right? <laughs> well, no, I'm sorry. Um, uh, yeah, there's no one for Frosted Tips in the crowd. Uh, what's your name, Frosted Tips? Nice to meet you, Frosted Tips. How you doing? Good. What do you do? Canterbury, you've heard it all. Gap years, absolutely fuck all. Brilliant. <laughs> the city of three universities. We know how to fucking do it. All right? We know how to fucking do it. Lovely stuff. Um, well, I've, I've actually uh, entered a bit of a, quite a, a serious relationship um, in the last month. Um, uh, it's, it's... Why are you laughing at that? Do I, does this not sound... Serious relationship to you? Very serious. 
Thanks. Uh, <laughs> yeah, my uh, Duolingo, my serious relationship. Yeah. Uh, any other Duolingoers in the house? Who <laughs> are, oh, sir? What, what do you do? What language? French. Of course you do. Uh, <laughs> well, what's your name, sorry? Sorry? What's your name? Amin. Amin. Lovely stuff. What do you do, Amin? I do law. Law. Oh. So actually someone who might get somewhere in life. Brilliant! <laughs> Lovely stuff, Amin. Uh, you do so. And what do you plan to do with your law degree? I wish I could have a better plan than the others. <laughs> oh. Well, I heard he's a barista, so that might help. <laughs> Oh, barrister, isn't it? That's my job, Canterbury. I set the bar here so that anyone else can come on and rise it up. Love this stuff. That was a, that was a coffee joke for you, brother. Cheers. Yeah, so I've entered um, a serious relationship with Duolingo. I've got a 36 day streak. Ooh. Thank you, Canterbury. Um, and I, I, I'm, I'm doing I'm doing Duolingo because I'm actually going uh, to Amsterdam pretty soon, um, and so I'm doing a bit of Dutch. And I did this because I thought, you know, it'd be good to know a little bit of Dutch while I'm out there, um, and I thought it'd be useful. So you know, I could order a beer or something. You know, go to one of those cafes. Um, uh, but. I, what I didn't expect with Duolingo is, is the weird shit that they would teach me. Because, you know, I, I, I haven't learned how to order a beer yet. Um, but I could tell you that I am an apple. <laughs> ich bin an apple. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's useful. It's useful. Uh, what else can I tell you? I can also say that I'm a banana. Ich bin a banana. Um, so I'm sure that will come in handy while I'm in Amsterdam. Uh, um, and yeah, so it's it's not you know it's not cracking up to what I thought it would be, um, but you know I've I've ploughed on. And the other thing I've noticed is there's no in between with Dutch, right? There's no like Dutch people in tonight, are there? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you clarified that for me. Thank you. Um, yeah, there's no in between with Dutch. Um, some words uh, make sense. So hello is hello. Makes sense. Um, and then there's others like bye. Bye is doi. Now, I don't know how we got from bye to doi, personally, but uh, what did I think that would be funny? That's <laughs> <laughs> um, um, <laughs> We'll just scrap the next bit. Um, but, uh, um, clearly not fans of the Duolingo material. Just for um, but we have we have um, hit a bit of a bump in our relationship near Duolingo, um, thanks to the single R. Um, uh, I received this notification the other day from Duolingo. A bit passive aggressive, if you ask me. Your Dutch lessons won't take themselves. <laughs> Well, thanks, Duolingo. Useful. And that's all the Duolingo. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so that's what I mean, Canterbury. The bar is set here so that when the comedians come on, you actually have laugh. That's my job. That's my job. Brilliant. Um, are we ready for some actual comedy, Canterbury? Yeah. Canterbury, are we ready for some actual comedy? Yeah. received at my funeral. <laughs> uh, I've actually got my name on the poster. I've had to change my name to uh, stand up in the tower. Uh, but I want to I talk to you because that's a comedian's job. Uh, about uh, a, a, a group of people I really hate. Uh, no, I'm a welfare officer. Uh, we're in the bar. Yeah. Uh, this group of people I really hate. I think we all hate them too. But I think, you know, I'm quite a nice guy. I try not to hate people. But this group of people, we despise. And this group of people is middle-aged men in pubs. 
<laughs> Apart from Paul, that bloke and the beast of the chase. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I wanted to try and understand uh, their habitat a bit better. So I thought, you know, I'll go into a pub. I went up to the waitress. I said, uh, I've got a domestic court order. And I her, she said, that'll be a set of artois and a pack of peanuts. <laughs> uh, but uh, these men are really a different breed. They're a different breed. You always have that guy called Tony in the corner. <laughs> now Tony thinks he's the shit, but he walks like a moving free freezer. <laughs> uh, but he always has his lines, so he thinks they're appropriate, but they're way outdated. He'll say things like, I'm oh, the fosters with the top, and in the bottom if you like. Why? <laughs> Sorry, that's a bit camp. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is going well, isn't it? Uh, but Tony's that type of guy. You can't show that you're upset to Tony because he'll just say things like, be a man, come on, man up. Come on, be a man like me, who likes cars, women, and top gear. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, have you ever seen a man when he gets too much froth in his beer? Oh, I'm not drinking that! Oh, excuse me, what the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? Put it back. Where's your manager? I'm not drinking that. <laughs> uh, I did write this the other day. Just doing a mental breakdown. <laughs> right. Uh, you always get that one creepy guy in the pub. His name's usually Sid. He's got sweaty hands. Uh, you know, like when you scramble eggs and you get a bit of yolk on your hands? It's like that when you shake his hand. Oh. Uh, all right, all right. Uh, they usually call him Sweaty Hand Sid. How long did that come up with? That's a good one. Uh, and uh, he's, the, he's the guy, you know, with the, the hair on the sides, the no hair on top, wears the leather jackets, the chain. Oh, oh God. Right? <laughs> I said he looked like James Mayton, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but Sid, Sid, Sid uh, hasn't felt the embrace of a woman in 42 years. Some say his wife has gone to Benidorm, some say she's under his floorboards. <laughs> uh, uh, but uh, he usually sits there quietly in the corner, uh, usually saying racist things. Uh, and then out of nowhere, we're just going, I need a shit. Because that's what men do. They have to announce when they have a shit, don't they? Mm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, 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 but if they don't announce it, you go, What's he doing in there? What's that taking him so long? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> anyone else want to say anything? Can you be funny? Who uh, else are we? Uh, uh, Sid's one of them guys who reminds you of the olden days. The days where, you know, science was so advanced, his own mum died from, like, a common cold. <laughs> uh, then, then there's a guy, there's always a guy called Bill. Bill that fucking walks in. His name's not actually Bill, it's John. So that's pub culture. Uh, and then Bill walks in. Bill thinks he's the comedian with his little one-liners. He's a little bit camp. Uh, and uh, he'll always he'll be tipping it down outside. And do you know what he comes up with? He goes, lovely weather outside. Piss off, Bill. <laughs> uh, uh, so that's all my research for the week. Uh, so next. We want to do Conservatives next month. <laughs> uh, oh, let me just say this joke, because I found it hilarious, as you can tell by my face. Um, uh, I said to my friend, have you seen the new film coming out this year? I said, no. Nope. Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> We're just going to keep going, Canterbury. We're going to bring on the next one. Are we excited for the next act? Yeah! Stand your feet, Canterbury. Clap your hands and welcome to the stage the one and the only James May. Oh, it's great. Oh, um, Lambert, can you can you move the pad? Is that all right? Move the what? Pad. I want to put my beverage in there. Sorry. <laughs> Cheers. But I fucking hate these cunts, alright, okay? 
Scott, Scott before the set goes, I know what you do, you should go on, you say, oh, I'm James Bay, stole me thunder, and then I thought, oh, you know what would be really funny, I'll come on and I'll say I'm James May anyway. Lambert stole that as well, so, I'm a bit naffed off. Um, so, this is all I've got, uh, it might not look like much, and that's because it is, it's, it's not a lot, um, and that's because I had to change my set last minute, because I've been told I'm not allowed to make jokes about the Queen. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not going to. I made a last minute adjustment. I was panicking. I was going, oh God, if only we had another controversial woman in power who has recently <laughs> been on the news and has the name Liz. <laughs> oh wait, we do, it's Liz Trust. I was so excited. It's the most excited I've ever been about Liz Truss. <laughs> Hallelujah, yeah. So uh, Liz Truss, she, she's the, um, the cool new transphobe on the block. Um, <laughs> she, she's making JK Rowling jealous, isn't she? <laughs> stealing, stealing all her terrible, terrible takes. Um, um, and I just want to clarify now, because this is a slightly political this set. Um, it might come as a surprise that as a bisexual drama student, I'm a little left-leaning. <laughs> um, but, you know, uh, I hate the Tories or something, that's, that's sort of my, my, my new personality I've got going on. It always was. I haven't recently adapted to hatred, I've always hated them. Um, I want to bring up a quote. A quote from old trust, you know, trust herself. Oh. Liz, Liz, laugh, trust. Was that the joke I had to say? Someone, you, did you tell me that one? No. Scott writes all my jokes, everyone. <laughs> um, yeah, but, but here's a quote from Liz Trust. You might have heard it. And that is... Two thirds of our cheese is imported. Dramatic pause. That is a disgrace. Now, this reminds me of our previous Prime Minister, old Bojo, you know? And he, had a, he, he kept going on about blue passports. Remember, remember blue passports? I couldn't tell you what the blue passports were for, but I knew about blue passports. And now, with trust, I know that two-thirds of the cheese is imported. You know? It's, it's weird, it's a weird priority. Let's... It's a really bad joke, it's really bad. <sighs> Let's just hope she doesn't leave our country in debris. No, no. Oh. That was a good joke. No. Uh, there's still time of cheese jokes left. Hey. Okay, it's over. The bit's over. The bit's over. <laughs> Um, and so is this set, actually. I've just realised that was the last thing I had written down, was cheese puns. <laughs> um, so thank you for putting up with me and enjoy the rest of the night. <laughs> Give it up for Graydon, everyone! Lovely stuff. Lovely stuff. Yeah, unfortunately, no Queen fashion tonight, unfortunately. Don't boo me. <laughs> All right, I have to be neutral, okay? <laughs> Why did neutral get a laugh? Go on. The floor's yours, Pinkton. I'm, I'm not saying a word. Go on, say it, I dare you. Dress like this, I'm staying back tonight. Yeah. <laughs> so at least we know where the royalists are in the room. <laughs> um, you, I mean, you take one look at Ollie, he clearly still supports racism, so that's valid. God. Okay, uh, um, and speaking of racism, oh, for fuck uh, are you ready for the next act? Are you ready for the next act, Canterbury? Give it up for our lovely hit player! Hello, white people. <laughs> um, how's that privilege of yours working out? Uh, <coughs> Pretty 
know what you want to say to that. Do you want a medal or? <laughs> um, actually, no, I, before I get into racism, I have something of a conundrum to deal with. Um, females, if you're going about your day, walking along the street, and a guy comes up to you, and you get to talking and communicating, and you grab his uh, Snapchat, WhatsApp, whatever you're interested in, um, and his first words are, hello, fair maiden. <laughs> Show of hands, who's responding? <laughs> Show of hands, who's not responding? Okay, so I am the problem. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, oh, no. <laughs> um, quick thought. Uh, this is definitely a KKK meeting. There is too many white people under this roof. It's a safety hazard <laughs> for me. Um, this audience is so white that 300 years ago, some of you definitely would have purchased me. <laughs> Shut up. Um, I have no business being here. I'm just here to make the lineup look, look more colorful or um, diverse. Um, quick joke. What do so I work at the Canterbury Historic River Tours and um, shut up and um, I have something of a joke to make. What do a slave and a tour have in common? They're both bought by white people. <laughs> shut up. Um, I'm twenty. I'm black, which means I get searched so much it makes my dilemma can jealous. Oh, it's not like she's here. Oh, so, I, so, so white people can do, you know, dark humor and, you know, say really tough jokes and get away with it. Get away with it. Uh, but let's just see how dark a black person can get. And in this case, I'm talking about jokes, not my skin tone. Um, but if you do want to find out about the skin tones, you can uh, go to Nigeria or go to any prison in America. Oh, I'm black and you say what I want, fuck you. Um, I'm shaking. Um, another boat joke. Um, I'm African, which means my preferred mode of transport is a boat. Some of you think you support racism, but uh, you don't. Cunts. Um, some of you might know me as a racist guy. No, wait, actually, that was a, uh, I was helping Nigel Farage write a speech. Um, some of you know me as the dark guy. Uh, no, wait, that's just how some of you differentiate between me and Daniel. Oh, shut up, it's a joke, laugh. Um, okay, final joke. So one day, I'm walking around in my socks, and um, someone comes up to me and says, you know, I like your socks, where did you get them? Um, and I say, thank you, I picked them. And he says, what, the socks or the cotton? Oh. I said both. <laughs> thank you, that's been me. <laughs> now, please, <laughs> Canterbury. Now it's, shut up. <laughs> um, it's come to that point in the evening where we have someone performing next who's never performed at the Stour before. Ooh. Are we ready for someone who's never performed at the Stour before? Yeah. 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 Yes, get on with it, Daniel. <laughs> so, are you ready with your guitar? No. <laughs> so we're not going to go to the next act just yet. Are we ready for our next act, Canterbury? <laughs> Please give it up for the one and the only, it's Anne! How's everyone doing? Whoa. We're going to try to get the guitar and the vocals at the same time, maybe. No? <laughs> okay! <laughs> um, I wrote this song uh, when I came to uni. Who's been to uni? <laughs> I knew you had me because it's just like society. Um, I got to uni and I, uh, I didn't have any spoons 
Um, <laughs> you know, I wrote a song about it, because you know, that's how you roll, isn't it? I'm looking for a girl with orange hair, I haven't seen her anywhere. I'm looking for a girl with orange hair, she said she had a And I thought it'd be easy Ooh, I didn't think Ooh, now the water tastes cheesy And my breath really stinks I ain't got no spoons I don't know what to do When you ain't got nothing You ain't got no spoons Walk around, town to town, shop to shop, rock to rock. When I get in, I'm gonna have no left to stop. When I'm lost, I only have the memory ones. I went to Thailand, but I didn't have the funds. Walk to Rome, trying to find some spoons. This I use because I ain't got no spoons. I didn't know what to do. When you ain't got nothing, you ain't got no spoons. Everyone come on my side. I ain't got no spoons. I don't know what to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you ain't got nothing, you ain't got no spoons. <laughs> Cheers. sad now um because I, I wrote a song it's a very sad song um a very personal song as well so let's get into it goes <laughs> like this be on edge right because it's really sad <laughs> Shout out to my friend Jake, who's on next. Give him a warm round of applause. Can I do this? Am I? <laughs> I'm usurping you. Because 
that work or? Jake goes off. Would you? Could, uh, G, everyone be nice to Jake. He's really great. <laughs> 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 He's here for one stour and he takes my fucking job. Yeah! Give it up to Adam Nogan, he smash it! Lovely yeah. stuff. You told me this morning, Canterbury, that I would be spending my evening listening to a man who talked about his severed penis. Woo! I would tell you that you were lying. <laughs> uh, but evidently not. <laughs> And I'm glad that we're this open with each other, that we can start talking about our penises. Yeah! Um, so this is the penis material. <laughs> okay, no one wants the penis material. Um, so yeah, I, I really don't know what to say after that. Um, so we're just going to swiftly move forward. Um, and this is your second act, who's never performed at Stour before. Ooh. So please, Canterbury, make him feel welcome. When you stamp your feet, you clap your hands and you welcome to the stage, Jay! Yeah. Yeah. Um, answer that. That's a long-time friend of mine. He's a lovely man. He's, he's fucking brilliant, actually. Both me and Anne, we take pride in our milk. Oh, you know, I'm lactose. Okay. <laughs> Who in here has been drinking milk tonight? <laughs> <laughs> Who would there? <laughs> Fuck yes, my man. Drinking that sweet, sweet lactate. Has everyone heard of a man named Crentine? Oh. Crentine. Oh, amen. Oh, and knows, and knows. He was the first person to commercially sell milk. <laughs> he named his business Crentine's Cream Time and Milk Emporium. <laughs> what a fucking legend. Okay, he was a cowboy, lived to the age of 96, oldest any cowboy's ever lived. Just thought I'd let you know that one. Not, not a joke. It's serious. There's a museum in London about it. <laughs> Not a joke. I, I, I work in Third Eye currently. Um, big up the goth mandem. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, um, and I, I'm a weird person. I like to talk weird shit to my customers. I ask them about milk whether or not they've been drinking it. I fucking love this stuff. I ask them about creme time, whether or not they've heard of it. One person turned around to me, often at where there is a museum in London about him, turned around to me going, did you know there's a museum in London about Crank Time? <laughs> I fucking lost my shit. I went absolutely mental. I ran about the shop telling all my colleagues, guess what? Crank Time's got a museum in London. <laughs> it was a wonderful time. It was a brilliant time. Talking of jobs, um, I've had some really shit ones in the past. Who else has had a shit job here? Yeah. yeah? You there, with the glasses and the shaved haircut. <laughs> what job, what, what, what's the shit job that you've had? I uh, worked in an Indian restaurant where I was a lead waiter from the age of about 15. That's a young age to be a lead waiter from. <laughs> <laughs> How old were the other waiters? About 20. Yeah, I can, yeah, I can, I can get that, yeah, yeah. Um, one of my shittest jobs that I've had is I worked at Kent and Canterbury Hospital. Yeah, um, during the peak of coronavirus, it was horrible. Uh, I was, um, my job was to feed the patients, make sure they weren't having seizures or strokes, poor Margaret in the corner fucking convulsing and shit. Um, um, yeah, feed the patients, I did uh, seizure and dementia training, all that sort of stuff. And when it got really overrun, I was taking bodies down to the morgue. Did I mention I was a cleaner, by the way? <laughs> Yeah, no, I've had some awful jobs. And actually, my entire life has been a shit show, uh, even before I was born. My surname's a spelling mistake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So my grandfather's father was a heavy alcoholic. My granddad tells me about him all the time. He, um, he turns around to me and goes, Hey, Jake, have you heard about my, my father? And I go, no, I haven't. Well, actually, yes, I have. You, I, I, I'm nice to him. I'm nice to him. I say I haven't heard anything, but I have over 50 times. Um... <laughs> Long story short, he was an alcoholic and he spelt my granddad's uh, surname wrong. So last Christmas, we were all sat down at dinner table, you know, and my granddad, he turns around to me and he, um, he's, got, he's got his phone out. He wants me to Facebook someone with a very similar name to mine, Ambrosine. My surname's Ambrosine, spelled A-M-B-R-O-I-S-I-N-E. 
This guy's name was spelled O M B R O I S I N E. Right? So he gets me to tell this long winded story over text as to uh, how he's actually related to this person. Bear in mind, none of my family knew that our surname was a spelling mistake, including my nan. So I hear this, I'm typing it out, I send it over. True story, by the way, no cap. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, so. I send the message and then something clicks and I go, wait, no cap. And my granddad goes, no cap. <laughs> um, and my nan lost her shit. She threw the plate across the room and went, what are you on about? Are you telling me that I lost my own surname and your surname isn't even your fucking surname? It's ridiculous. It was fucking nuts. I was almost born in the toilet as well, adding on to that. It's ridiculous. It's fucking ridiculous. Have you been drinking milk? Why haven't you been drinking milk? Yeah, good. Good. Buck your ideas up. Yeah. I'm glad. Yeah. I like to grip the mic. Like that. By the way, I have no material. Um, so I'm, I'm just chatting shit and um, gripping the mic in a funny way that I enjoy. I might do it from now on like this. By not the handle but the warm fuzzy bit that Anthony previously spat into. I'm used to that, don't worry. It's my five minutes up, I don't have any, I don't have any like, full time in my head. What are the prizes? Oh, shit, thank you, Anne. thank you. Right, I've got myself in my pocket a bunch of prizes, right? I am going to, what the fuck am I, I've got no material by the way, I don't know how I'm going to be about these prizes. Um, They've got to win them somehow. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It is the nature of prizes. Um, all right then. All right. Can anyone tell me who the modern day depiction of Jesus derives from? <laughs> Very close. Well, there you go. There we go. There we go. Do you want to come up here, young man? Yeah, sure. <laughs> You win, because it was a difficult question, guys. It was a very difficult question. You win my used toothbrush. I'll take it. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Just before this, I went through my bag and found a bunch of random shit that I didn't know was there. So those are the prizes for tonight. Okay, and give me a question. Who was the first person to commercially sell milk? <laughs> who, was the, who was the first person to commercially sell milk? Who said crack time? Great, come over here, please. I'm listening. I'm sorry, no, if I want it. See, okay, take notes. This is someone who listens, okay? Yeah. Any of you could have won this prize. <laughs> and it's not another used toothbrush. Oh, fuck. Here is a pen that has been sharpened on both sides. It's a pencil, actually. Yeah. <laughs> is my five minutes up now? Yes. <laughs> okay, right. Thank you very much. You've been lovely. And that is the result when you give two stoners a microphone. <laughs> so I've learned for next time. <laughs> Let's not have them. <laughs> no, no, you smashed it, boy. Didn't they smash it? <laughs> Baldy over here doesn't agree, unfortunately, boys. Enjoying it, Baldy? Oh, <laughs> Oh. So that is a callback to the fact that I work for Gillingham Football Club. Now, fun story, the last time we were here, a couple of months ago, I made a very inappropriate joke about Gillingham Football Club, even though I work for them. So we removed the footage from YouTube, and I've still got a job. Yeah. Canterbury, modern day saint. What can I say? What can I say? And... Speaking of modern day saints, are we excited for our next act? Yeah! Love this stuff. This act is a UKC stand up comedy society legend. So, Canterbury, please make him feel welcome. It's the one, the only, Sterling Ryan! Yeah! Alright, Canterbury? Yeah! Woo! Um, apologies beforehand, little disclaimer. 
Um, I'm not feeling very well today. Um, oh. Don't patronise me. Uh, I'm joking, you can. Um, yeah, I've got a cough, so if I start coughing uncontrollably at any point, I'll just run out and just run to A&E or something. Um, don't worry about the cough. It's only COVID. No, it's fresh as flu. Um, I've also noticed that some of my fellow acts are um, they're more spontaneous when it comes to audience like interaction slash audience reaction. Now I'm autistic. I'm, aut <laughs> I'm autistic, so if you think you're going to get spontaneity from me, you're wrong. And when you mention autism on stage, I am... Woo! Autism. Woo! See, we've got some autistics in. Um, when you mention autism on stage, some audience members, not all of you, you seem like a nice crowd, some audience members can be a bit, uh, what's the word, um, discriminatory. So if any of you, um, if I, if any of you uh, feel discriminatory during my set, just be aware it is hate crime. Fuck you. <laughs> Have we had a good summer? Woo! Good. Um, I turned uh, 22 during the summer. Um, we got any 22 year olds in? One person. <laughs> it's a pointless age. Just yeah, skip it. Yeah. All you get is all you heard the song by Taylor Swift. Yeah. <laughs> and it also means. Um, I've only got three years left to date Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> I also saw um, I saw Elvis during the summer. Did we see Elvis? <laughs> Not gonna lie, I thought he was. Um, I thought Elvis was dead. <laughs> um, so it's been it's been a bit of a week, hasn't it, Cancer? It's been a bit of a week. Um, we said bye bye Boris, and then we said hello Liz, and then we said goodbye to um, Queen Liz. But I want to focus on the positive, there were positives to this week. Um, we also said fuck off to Chrissy Patel. Yay! I've heard now she's, now she's fucked off. Um, she's starting her own fragrance, her own perfume. It's called Empathy. <laughs> Empathy by Chrissy Patel. I mean, that's like, have we seen the advert with, um, with Adam Driver? Has anyone seen that? Okay, yeah. You know, where he's topless and he's like running into the sea. In case you don't know what running looks like. <laughs> he's got a horse, for some reason. And he's sort of coming out of the sea like, like Moto Moto from Madagascar. Have we seen that one? <laughs> it's called Burberry Hero. But it's the villain of Star Wars. The fuck? It's like, that would be like, next Prime Minister, the fragrance by Rishi Sunak. <laughs> so we've got some Rishi fans in. So we've all had a good summer. Um, did we work hard during the summer? Did we earn money during the summer? Enough for this year? So I work at um, Canterbury Cathedral, hence the t-shirt. We get some very interesting people in there, some interesting families. Um, we also get a lot of weddings. We had a family in uh, a couple of weeks ago from Devon, where I'm from. So naturally I was like, oh, Devon family, quite excited. They didn't get along with the other family. So I'm just kind of clearing the glasses, just minding my own business, you know, doo -doo -doo, clearing the glasses. They're on the dance floor. It seems like they're having a nice time. But I overhear the bride's parents, they're having a bit of a serious conversation. I'll set the scene for you, right? I'll set the scene because that doesn't make sense. Um, so the bride's mum, she's on the dance floor, and I hear her go, now listen, right? <laughs> they're dancing, not mine. I heard them call my daughter something, okay? But if I tell you, you've got to promise not to lose your shit, okay? And now the dad's over here, he's like, what they call my daughter? <laughs> tell me, my lover! in that dance, it's called the bus driver. And then she makes him worse, she antagonises him and she's like, yeah, but I know what you're like. If I tell you this, I can't spin around. If I tell you this, you're going to go fucking off on one, you really are. 
And now he's really, really annoyed. And he's like, what the fuck? And now they call my daughter. And then she goes, see? That's why I can't tell you anything. <laughs> Turns out someone had called the bride a cunt. <laughs> they dropped the C-bomb. <laughs> yeah, and the two families got into a fight. And I was like, oh, no. it's an important phone call, shall I? Oh, I'm so sorry, okay. Um, <laughs> so, the two families got into a fight, and I was like, it's a special day, and I'm going to have to call the police, because, yeah, there's a fight going on. It turns out the cathedral have their own police. Didn't know that. No sirens, though. All I heard was, oh. <laughs> so cathedral police. <laughs> <coughs> More on the summer. Uh, do we see family? Yeah, Loved ones? Family. Acquaintances? Others? I stayed with my mum for a couple of weeks. Uh, she lives in an apartment building. And uh, there's a lot of drama going on with the, um, I call them the old folk. And I was like, oh, fuck's sake, I've just finished uni, I want to come back, chill, put my feet up, play Red Dead. It's just going to be a shit week, there's, there's going to be drama. Because in one corner you've got the sort of, the old busybodies. And in the other corner you've got my mum, who doesn't give a toss. But something weird happened, the more drama I saw, I became invested. I actually enjoy hearing about my mum's flat drama now. I'm on season three already. <laughs> Grand Theft Hern Bay. <laughs> Not all of the drama is face to face. Some confrontations happen over WhatsApp. We heard this row in the hallway. Uh, me and mum are just listening at the door. We hear these, these two people arguing. We just hear someone go, Mabel, how very dare you. Stomp, stomp. Slam the door. Gets her phone up. Gets on the phone. She's thinking about what to say next. I should have said this to Mabel. Typey, 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 typey. Mabel, you fucking bitch. Typey, typey, typey. Oh, have it, Mabel. Fuck it, have it. And I'm looking at the, the messages. It's like terms and conditions. I'm like... And then I get to the bottom. What does it say? Read more. <laughs> um, I don't know if that's been five minutes or not. Um, I've been Sterling Ross. Um, if you've been discriminatory at any point during my set, it's a hate crime. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Take it easy, goodnight! <laughs> Give it up for Sterling Ross! <laughs> now we have come to that very sad time in the evening, Canterbury. We've only got one le act left of our first half. Aww. Don't worry, because there's loads more in the second! <laughs> Every time I do that, you sound a little bit more disappointed when I tell you that there's more to come. <laughs> I promise it's worth it. Just go up there and slap it off. Maybe not. Um, <laughs> but are you ready for your last act? If the first half cut to three? Yeah. Lovely stuff, please make her feel very special. It's so fucking handy! Hello everyone, my name is Brooke and I'm a sex addict. Sorry, it's a stand up tonight, sorry. My name is Brooke, I'll be your stand up comic for the next lovely five minutes. Cool. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to get a little bit better at stand-up comedy, so I've got my lovely bright orange notebook with me. Last time you were here, I was reading off my phone. Now it's a little bit smaller, I've just got a little notebook. Next time it might be more smaller. And then hopefully one day my notes will be as small as Piers Morgan's dick. <laughs> I also read somewhere that being a good stand-up comic means you have to acknowledge the space. So, for example, big fuck off TV. Light bulbs. <laughs> Cider. White guy. No. White guy. White guy. Oh. White guy. Oh shit, stand up comedy, what was I expecting? 
<laughs> so I just moved into Canterbury again. It's my second year now. I just moved back. I do love Canterbury. Can we get a cheer for the city of Canterbury? Woo! But I do think it's a little bit of an odd place. It's kind of this mixed match in between between a student town and an old people's town. Are we picking up on this vibe? So, for example, it's kind of like, oh, do we go to Marks and Spencers and get our shopping in our wheelie trolley that takes up the whole of the pavement? Or do we go to my bake shop? <laughs> do we go to the Marlowe Theatre and watch the matinee of Dream Girls? Or do we go to my bake shop? <laughs> I'm twist from that one. <laughs> um, I also read that Canterbury Cathedral is where Christianity started in Britain. <laughs> so it used to be this really pristine religious place, and now it's wedged in between two web spoons, like some sort of six spoon sandwich. I can't fucking believe it. <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> Um, Canterbury's also a little bit of a weird place. I was walking through the park with my boyfriend the other day, you know, hard in hands doing all that gay shit. Um, and I heard these two definitely prepubescent boys walking down the streets together, walking in the park. <coughs> and one of them just went, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I know what porn is. <laughs> like he was trying to win some sort of medal, but the only medal he was actually winning was world's most ruined childhood. <laughs> but then you won't believe because the next guy turned to him and he said, Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. What is porn then? Ooh. 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 Let's just say it got more silent than the 11th of November. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of little boys, oh. Oh. <laughs> I was in Starbucks um, trying to get some food before work and I saw these two other, again, prepubescent boys in tracksuits. Who's selling tracksuits to all these prepubescent boys? <coughs> um, and clearly they didn't have enough money to buy their own 4 99 elf bars because they were sharing one of them. But they weren't doing the whole joint rotation thing because they're not old enough to know how to fucking rotate a joint. So one, one of the guys would take the, the hit of this fucking great elf bar, and he was like... <laughs> <laughs> and then he turned to his friend for the most awkward, weird first kiss ever, and just grabbed his neck and went like... <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> the sexual tension is up here, by the way. I'm watching in the corner with my cross on, like, what the fuck is about to go <laughs> and then they, And then the other guy just kind of goes like... <laughs> oh, that's good, thank you, mate, thank you. Mate. <laughs> and the only thing I could think to myself was, isn't it so sad that young people don't feel comfortable enough to come out these days? <laughs> I thought we were better than this country in 2022. Uh, speaking of coming out, you might not know I am in fact non-binary. Can I get a cheer? <laughs> Canterbury is an interesting one because here in Canterbury, student town, I'm known as they them. I'm brick, I'm non-binary. But at home, I'm just known as a girl who doesn't know what clothes size she's meant to wear. <laughs> um, I know I don't really look like a normal non-binary person, you know, typical stereotypes, the shaved heads, the that's it really. <laughs> Anyway, I think I've had about five minutes now, and I know Evie said that we are not allowed to last more than five minutes, but that's not what she was saying to me last night. Oh. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for your time. Just clarify, I I, I apologise for misgendering you. I apologise. That's that's me proving how much of a straight white man I am. <laughs> Lovely stuff. So that is it. That's your first half Canterbury. Did you enjoy it? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Luke, for walking in front of us. Um, Reese, did you enjoy it? Yeah. Frosted tips. Did we enjoy it? Yeah. <laughs> Especially Jay. Oh. All right, take him out of dinner first. <laughs> yeah. You already have. Hey, yo! <laughs> yeah, all find some milk. He's quick, this one. He should do stand up. <laughs> he should do stand up. French guy, I can't remember your name. Did you enjoy the first half? I got a good one. Whoa! Oh. Now that is the peak of stand up comedy. <laughs> <laughs> a free toothbrush. Lovely stuff. We're going to take a half an hour break and we will be back at. Half eight, Canterbury, go wee, go poo, go get a drink, go have a smoke, we'll see you in half an hour!
Sound Sexy, hey, Daniel Lambert! Woo! How we doing, Calvary? We're all right! Woo! Lovely stuff, lovely stuff. Have we all had a good break? Yeah! yeah. Reese, what have we been up to in our break? I went home and drunk wine. Reese went home and drunk wine! Yeah. Lovely stuff. Frosty Tip, what are we doing in our break? Outside. He stood outside! Yeah. I'm French guy, what did you do in your break? Uh, maybe talk to you. He made me talk to me! Yeah. What a way to spend your break, eh? Yeah. Stop it, you! Brilliant. Um, I have to start the second half with a pretty fucking ballsy move from our barman Ollie here. Now, we want this gone, Canterbury. Alright? Do you know what else we want gone? Cancer. All right. So Ollie has said the person who donates the highest right now, not only will he match said donation, but then we'll finish off this whiskey. Okay. So I'm gonna get my little hungry lucky lucky voice on. Any takers? Any takers? Give me the bottle. Twenty quid. Any takers on twenty quid? Hundred pounds. hundred pounds. Or can put hundred quid for the till, I will match a hundred quid. I oh, will. Oh, oh. If I can't, yeah. if you come and do it, I will match a hundred pounds. It looks like a hundred pounds! Fuck! What is going on, Tony? I'm warning you now, Canterbury, nothing is going to top this. All right, right. I think we've got to count it down, don't we? Three, two, one! some upcoming events. So if you've loved what you've seen tonight, well guess what? You get to see it all again next Thursday. Again. There we go. And the Mungo's Comedy Club! For all of those UKC students that are here tonight, we will be at Mungo's uh, next Thursday to uh, do some funnies like we've been doing tonight. So if you are interested guys, Please do come along next Thursday at 7 p.m. in Mongo's for some more comedy. But I have actually got some really, really big news tonight, Canterbury. All right? Have we all heard of Edinburgh Fringe? Yeah, we've all heard of Edinburgh Fringe? Well, guess what? The UKC Society is going to do the Famisham Fringe. Right? It, it, it's like Edinburgh, all right? But in Fabershoe. <laughs> Alright, so these guys, uh, on what day? Tuesday the 25th of October. Tuesday the 25th of October, we'll be doing a night at the Fabershoe Fridge. How sick is that? <laughs> Proper sick, right? And uh, because I am hosting tonight, I have got to do a bit of a shameless plug. Because not only have the UKC Stand Up Comedy Society got their own show at the Fringe, so do I. <laughs> so, Canterbury! Next, uh, Tuesday the 25th of October, come and see Death Daniel Black Daniel, where myself and the one and only Daniel will be doing a whole hour of comedy. And that's an hour of food. So please, 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 please. It is currently, tickets aren't currently available, but if you could give either the society a follow uh, on Instagram or even myself, uh, and brand new on Instagram, come and ask us what our names are. All the information will be on Instagram, all right? Wait, we will be... <laughs> I'm that guy. <laughs> sorry, 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 do you have a fashion friend show? 
I thought not. Brilliant. Uh, <laughs> lovely, lovely stuff. <laughs> lovely stuff. Yeah, no, honestly, it would mean so much to not only myself and uh, Daniel, but the whole society if you did come and support us in Faversham. Uh, this is a pretty big deal, all right? I know it's not quite Edinburgh. I know it's Faversham. <laughs> I know it's Faversham, Canterbury. Chaversham, as some may say. But <laughs> please, it would mean so much to us if you could come and support us. That is my shameless plug-in done. Um, but just in case, Canterbury, did you guys know I was deaf, by the way? No, I didn't. Didn't know I was past deaf? Yes. Strap in, all right? We've got some deaf jokes for you, all right? Um, uh, yeah, it, I, I don't know. This is probably going to be quite new news to all of you lot. There's actually a lot of beef um, in the hard of hearing community. So if you ever go to the, uh, to the audiology department uh, in hospital, the, the, the two things you'll go for is either being you know, deaf, having hear loss, or if you uh, have tinnitus. Uh, do we have any people with tinnitus in tonight? Whoa! A couple, a couple. Uh, well, to that I say, fuck you. Uh, um, so you, you can see there's a bit of beef between us uh, hearing loss versus those uh, tinnitus people. Obviously, they keep complaining how bad it is, the little ringing in their ears, you know? Oh, bless them. At least you can fucking hear the ringing. You know? <laughs> I would love to be able to just hear that, you know, hey, the, the tinnitus joke went down, I'll take that, I'll take that. And you'll see even more hilarious deaf jokes like that at fashion. When, how many times do I do it before I stop blowing your... Okay. Um, uh, but, I, do you know what, recently I have actually... Cheers, Leon. Um, I've actually had some issues uh, with people saying some stuff to me. Uh, even though I'm deaf, and these are these are just things you don't say to a deaf guy. All right. The other day, someone said to me, "Did you hear that?" <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Jeff. Um, uh, what else? So someone said to me, um, "Don't mind if I turn the subtitles off, do you?" Oh, God. Well, actually, I do. Right? I do mind if you turn the subtitles off, because otherwise, it's just people going like this. <laughs> Like the subtitle material. <laughs> Boom. Um, but the one thing I was said, I was told recently, um, and this is genuinely true, I'm not making this up, Canterbury. Someone genuinely said to me the other day, cover your ears for a moment. <laughs> now, now that I'm going to be honest, you Canterbury, that is the last thing you say to a deaf person. Because most of the time, you want them to actually use their ears, just in case they don't hear uh, what you're saying. Um, but that, that, I, I, I think that's that, saying cover your ears to the deaf person, is basically on the same level as um, saying to someone in a wheelchair, take a seat. <laughs> right? <laughs> whoa, whoa, so we have some issues with the wheelchair material, but the subtitle material, that's fine. Okay, alright. <laughs> Make a note, no wheelchair jokes. No, no wheelchair jokes. Um, it's just adding salt to the wound, though, isn't it? Can it be cover your ears? Bullshit, man. You don't tell a deaf person to cover their ears. Yeah? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Canterbury. Um, and that was, that was the death stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> and if you like that, well, I'll tell you what, on Tuesday the 25th of October, you can come and see Death Daniel Black, Daniel Fams and Fringe! <laughs> Oh, thanks for boosting my self-esteem. Canterbury, <laughs> you know how to make a man feel better about themselves. Um, now, I'm, I'm just going to shut up. I'm just going to shut up, and we're going to bring on your first act. Are we ready, Canterbury, for your first act? <laughs> Lovely stuff. So please, Canterbury, make this act feel nice and welcome. It's the one, the only, MJ! <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Um, I'd make a joke about my tinnitus, but Dan won't hear it. So. <laughs> anyway, good evening, Canterbury. Uh, it's good to be back. I've actually uh, spent most of the summer in, um, funny enough, Somerset. Um, and, you know, I was uh, up to um, most of uh, what Somerset is really well known for. Buckle! <laughs> uh, you know... The best thing to do there, really, is just, uh, you know, start counting sheep. <laughs> then feeding the sheep. <laughs> and then eating the sheep. They're really multifaceted creatures. You know? <laughs> um, 
you know, I've actually started getting, uh, you know, quite upset coming back here because, uh, you know, I show up and uh, I find out that uh, Brooke's here and Brooke, well, they've, um, you know, they've kind of stolen my style, <laughs> my book, and my fucking pronouns, apparently. <laughs> good to know that I wasn't missed. <laughs> so yeah, um, in case you couldn't tell, um, I had about two hours to write this set, uh, so if it does accidentally run over, then uh, someone just, I don't know, throw me into the mooring or something. I don't know. Um, So if I don't run over, then just throw me into the sour. Um, right, so um, people don't really understand what I mean when um, I say Somerset is remote, because, you know, I took my girlfriend there while I was there, and, um, you know, she didn't quite believe how remote I said it was until she realised that, um, well, there used to be a bus, <laughs> once a day, to the next village, but, you know, other than that, we do have a train that runs through without a fucking station. <laughs> but, you know, there is a bridge so if, that it runs through. So, you know, if you just go on there, you know, you just put on your bandana, you can pretend to be a cowboy and just jump over the bridge onto it. Oh, it's really a lot of fun, but don't worry. Make sure you've got a rail card first, otherwise it's extortion. <laughs> anyway, uh, got back to Canterbury the next day, decided to get a cat. Um, yeah, the sanctuary must have really hated the bugger because as soon as I called up, they were just like, "Can you pick him up in an hour, please?" <laughs> but no, uh, I love the little fella. He's had, we've had him one day, and uh, he already acts like he owns the fucking place. I mean, he kind of does, but um, you know, he seems to have this obsession. I don't know. Uh, does anyone have cats in the audience? Yes. Yes. Ooh. Nice. Represent. But dogs. Am I right? No, don't fuck dogs. <laughs> <laughs> You might, you might know, once you get a, a new cat, a lot of the time they like to kind of like brush their face up against a lot of surfaces to kind of mark their set. Well, this little guy, what he does to mark his scent is he does this. <laughs> I'm surprised he's not got a concussion yet, honestly. I mean, to be honest, most of us do have concussions in the house, we should really go to the doctors. But, um, um, yeah, so, um, his, um, his name is, um, Sooty Lanfranc, and, um, I mean, I kind of combined the names that I wanted to, uh, give him and the, um, sanctuary. So he's, um, he's a black cat, but, um, the reason why I needed to give him a double-barreled bar name isn't because, um, he's a Tory. Um, <laughs> It's, it's actually because uh, the first time I was talking about my, like, dream name for a cat with my um, housemate, the audience over here, uh, the first time we were doing it, we were talking, and I said, oh, yeah, no, I'd, I'd quite like, you know, to a black cat land front, because I feel like it's quite witchy and everything. Um, and I kid you not, Kate, when I, when I told them the name, they misheard it. Um, they thought that I had wanted to call a cat... Anne Frank. <laughs> Anne. Anne. Fr I'm not sure if I'm more offended by the fact that they thought I'd call it Anne Frank, <laughs> or the fact that they heard Anne Frank. It might have just been my Somerset accent, but you never know. Um, one second. Um, don't. Alright, <laughs> uh, oh shit, not done my B reel yet for the day. Uh, <laughs> one second, I think, it, I think it popped in the audience, I heard, uh, uh you know, how they have the weird ones, anyway, sorry. Uh, sorry, if you want to, if you want to just post for a second. Um, sorry, so, uh, smile everyone! Go on, go on, smile! Smile, please. <laughs> Deep <Deepenal>, please. <laughs> yes, that's brilliant. Thank you very much. Okay, all right, so. Uh, right. Hold, 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 hold. And there we go. All right. Uh. Thanks.
Two, I guess. Yay! Give it up for Ray James Huckabee! Lovely stuff. Again, if you told me this morning that someone would be taking a bill reel on stage tonight, I would say, mate, shut up, what are you doing? You're probably higher than the people during the break. Um, no, was that, was that too far? Oh, I'm getting a finger from Luke. You wish, mate. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? There's nothing more I want Canterbury than to Luke to finger me. Uh, uh, we're just going to move on. Um, our next act is actually, um, it's actually our youngest act. Um, and uh, they're, they're just uh, they're just starting their first year at university. Um, so please, you know, be nice to them. Okay, we you know we want to make sure that they feel supported uh, and have a nice time when they come and do some comedy. Uh, so please, Canterbury, let's stamp your feet. Let's clap your hands. The one, the only, the fifty-year-old Paul Thank you everyone, thank you for that warm welcome, but I do know what some of you are thinking. This is a student gig, exactly how long was your fucking gap year? <laughs> <laughs> well, the least I owe you is a formal introduction. Uh, my name is Paul, uh, my birthday a few weeks ago meant that I now identify, unfortunately, as a 50 year old man. I have teenage children and I've been married 15 years, so my pronouns are oi and that prick. <laughs> but it is it's tough getting older, your self-esteem goes down all the time. Even the, the junk emails I receive affect my self-confidence these days. I used to get a lot of emails from single people in my area offering to hook up. <laughs> They've stopped. <laughs> I love that loud. <laughs> now I get things like, Imodium, don't let diarrhea ruin your day. <laughs> it's like everyone got together and decided, don't go out with him, he'll probably shit on you. <laughs> but it's tough. The TV companies don't help. The names they give to programmes aimed at my generation. Um, Reese, if you were on television, you would be on something with an exciting name like um, Love Island or Naked Attraction or First Dates. Yeah. If I go on telly, it'd probably be called Embarrassing Bodies. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think you are? <laughs> Pointless. <laughs> I'll see what else isn't fair either, I don't think. You know if a 50-year-old woman starts dating an 18-year-old man, you know what we call her? Named after an animal? Cougar. Cougar, exactly. It's a compliment. We applaud it. Not quite as popular the other way around, is it? <laughs> I said to my wife, if I started seeing an 18-year-old girl, what would you call me? Prince Andrew. <laughs> Gentlemen, make his first appearance of Stand Up on the Star. The man, the man, the man by the coffee machine. I dropped my Prince Andrew joke because I was told to. Do you mind if I start the setup again on that one? Forget you haven't heard the first bit. I said to my wife, if I started dating an 18 year old girl, what would you call me? She said, an ambulance. <laughs> Yours got a fucking bigger laugh. <laughs> Shit. Well, I don't help myself though with self esteem. I keep comparing myself to other 50 year old men in the public eye. You know, Tom Cruise, still in his 50s, flying jet planes through the eye of a needle. The other day, I hit a bollard in Liddles. <laughs> <laughs> Say so Tom's got the body of an athlete. I've got athlete's foot. <laughs> uh, Dwayne the Rock Johnson, also in his fifties. The man is bigger than my fucking house. <laughs> Known as uh, Dwayne the Rock because he looks like he's made of granite. 
I, at my last job, was known as Paul the Rocket Steer. Oh, yes. Unfortunately, it was because I was seen in a sales meeting with an erection. <laughs> I've started getting angrier as I get older as well. Uh, the other day I got called to a Zoom meeting where they were comparing those of us that work from home to those of us that had returned to the office. They said that we were unproductive, unreliable and easily distracted. I was fucking furious. Well, I didn't hear how the meeting ended, because bargain hunt had started. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing that gets on my nerves, really, is the way my, my childhood memories of the 80s have become so tarnished. Um, my favourite days were when my dad used to drive me up to the top of the pop studios to see my favourite bands. Hosted by Sorry. Jimmy Savile. <laughs> Number one. Gary Glitter. Why are you staring me in the eyes when you say Gary Glitter and Jimmy? Because you look like a pervert. <laughs> Stop pissing in my drink. <laughs> Just get me focused. Um, but we got free biscuits. So, every cloud. Um, jammy Dodgers. Um, party rings, chocolate fingers, were just some of the accusations. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'll just let you finish snorting. <laughs> People are, are, are shocked there was no seatbelt laws for kids back then, but the journey up there was at least about safety worries. <laughs> Um, but if you're worried, um, we always got home safely, just in time to watch Rolf Harris. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that is it. I've got any time left, don't I? <laughs> you're right, there, there's just this new material night, it's all new. Um, I've written some stuff down over the last couple of days, I certainly can't remember it. Um, <laughs> 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 Um, what did I write down the other day? Um, yeah, I don't... What well, makes me nervous, I don't want to be um, like... Like other middle-aged people. I don't want to give their opinions, my opinions on everything, even when you didn't ask. Most sit-in houses they pay £12 for, writing on Amazon about how disappointed they are with their waffle maker. <laughs> Maybe not. The other... <laughs> The other thing I wrote down as well... Gay, Reese, if you want to take a... You want to travel, you go on a gap year, don't you? Yeah. It's a true story. I, I spoke to the people I work for. You know what it's called for the over 50s? A golden gap year. Fucking <laughs> golden gap. Sounds like the distance I missed the toilet by. <laughs> <laughs> Two ticks. <laughs> and then... Very briefly, I only just got back from holiday with my family and I heard something that made us both laugh, but more importantly, made me look like a really good husband and father. And um, I don't know how to get this into a joke or a story really, but we, we witnessed um, a couple walking back from the swimming pool. They must have had seven or eight kids and they were having a massive row. Um, he'd been asleep, he had played with the kids, he'd got the wrong cocktail. And she suddenly stopped bollocking him and went, you've left the fucking baby on the sunbed. <laughs> and him, without breaking stride, went, at least it's reserved for the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> um, it's always a treat to come here. It really is. Enjoy the rest of your night. Hopefully I'll see you again. Stuff. Now, I, 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 I don't know about you, Canterbury, but when I think comedy, I think a 50-year-old man talking about his erect penis. <laughs> <laughs> Just throwing it out there. French guy's loving it. Um, and I tell you, Paul, I tell you, we, we got any football fans in tonight? Yay! Couple, couple. So you're, you're, you're happily sitting here instead of watching the Chelsea game? Yes. Yeah. Or not? Apparently not. I was going to try and loop it out where I talked about the g game that's currently going on, but okay, it, it's nil-nil and it's half-time, so 
Of course, you're having more fun here, right, Cat Three? <laughs> and that's the football bit uh, done. Uh, I've got some football jokes for you, actually. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. You guys may have heard more, right? But the lovely people at Canterbury would like to hear my football jokes. Wouldn't you, Canterbury? Yes! yes. Yeah. This guy said to me the other day, is that you know any football jokes? I said, well, I don't have that many in my arsenal. <laughs> You're laughing, but you chose to be here. Okay? Um... He then asked me where my favourite place to play football was. I said, Nottingham Forest. <laughs> Not in the forest. <laughs> Sorry, what was that? Where's the next act? <laughs> well, unfortunately, your mum couldn't be here tonight, alright? That was cheap, that was cheap, that was it. I apologise, I apologise. I know she is. Uh, Greece, are we enjoying the second half so far? Absolutely. What's been your highlight so far? Oh, I think it was the uh, disgraced cheesy fish. The disgraced cheesy fish. <laughs> Yummy. <laughs> Frosted tips, are we enjoying the second half? What's been your favourite part so far? Um, your content, yeah. My content. <laughs> the shameless plugging. Oh. What was that a he was? Yeah, so um, if you don't know... <laughs> ah, thanks, Ross, it dips. Uh, lovely stuff, French guy. Are you enjoying yourself? Absolutely lovely. Yeah? Lovely. That's a new word describing comedy, isn't it? I had a lovely time. The comedy was lovely. And what have you enjoyed so, hot, uh, so far about the second half? My failed football jokes. My failed football jokes. Yeah, are we, are we good to go? Yes. Lovely. Now your next act, Canterbury, has got so many P's in their name that I've lost count of how many P's it is. Alright, so bear with me, but please, get ready, snap your feet for me, clap your hands, and welcome to the stage, PowerPoint Poetry Temple Time! Great to be here. Is everyone having a good night? Yes! Yeah. Yeah. So, this is actually the seventh stand up on, on the Sour that I've been a part of, and there's always been a bit of an elephant in the room, more so today than any other day. Just why? Like, why? All of this, why the, why the PowerPoint? Why, why any of that? And, you know, you're all here for a good night, some witty banter, you're drinking, you're having a good time, and. I'm up here looking like I'm about to give a TED talk on why the colour purple is the answer to life, the universe and everything. <laughs> and you'd be completely right. That's exactly what I'm going to do for you today, Canterbury. This is my first ever TED talk. Here we go. It's my first ever TED talk on the colour purple. Now, <laughs> some of you may not be with me, but I'm sure you will be by the end. So you of course know me, uh, I'm Tommy, uh, the colour enthusiast, um, I'm also a comedian, I'm also a power pointer, and I'm just an all around amazing human being. <laughs> <laughs> and, listen, like colour, colour is, colour is like all around us, right? You don't necessarily realise it, but it is. It's everywhere, from like the world that inhabits us, like it's, it's all always there. <laughs> everywhere we go, even to the clothes that you find on your bedroom floor that you're fairly sure don't belong to your partner. And, and, just saying how it is, and, basically, I, I think that the best colour is purple. And it goes so incredibly, like, un, undervalued, you know, Philosophers have kind of talked about what the answer to life yeah. is for quite a while. There's quite a few of them. Uh, let's go. Let's go over some of them. Oh, okay. I forgot a thing. It's fine. So, uh, yeah. Basically, we have philosophers uh, who have done some things. Uh, there's Socrates. He, he's great. Uh, there's also Aristotle. He tried to ponder the answer to life, the universe, and everything. There was Plato. And last but not least, there was Diogenes. 
And there were even some, if you can believe it, who don't sound like they're in some kind of philosophy-themed funk band. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a few of them, but sadly not these ones. But anyway, so I think that purple is the answer to life, the universe, and everything. And I thought I'd start with something that I love, which is uh, statistics. I said, do we, ha do we have any math students in? Um, 12, 15, Physics? Yeah. It's not the same. Uh, so I'm going to go over some statistics, right? Um, so in 99% of all car accidents, the involved parties were not driving a purple car. Oh no! I know, 99.9%. .9%. You can't, you can't fight those odds. Um, in fact, in 98% of all accidental con conceptions, the involved parties were not wearing purple. Think about it for a second. Think about it. Okay, there we go. So yeah, 98%. Uh, they weren't wearing purple, and most importantly, for me at least, purple earns you a Scrabble score. If we get a second, here we go. All the build up. Purple gives you a Scrabble score of ten. You do physics. Do you want to confirm that that is correct? Uh, yeah, that is correct. That is correct. Good. Brilliant. Brilliant. And just to compare that to some things, uh, just quickly, uh, some other colours, if you will. Uh, we have red at four. Awful, awful odd, awful, awful stats. There we go. Uh, we then have blue at six. Still awful, still absolutely awful compared to purple. And uh, we of course have orange at seven, which is still not is paling in comparison to purple. In fact, I was to go. I would go so far as to say there are very few words that are higher in Scrabble than purple. Just so many few, like absolutely none at all there. Yeah. Yeah. And they just none of them at all whatsoever. In fact, the only one that I can think of that is, is of course the longest Scrabble word, which I think we all know what that is. Uh, the longest Scrabble word, oh sorry, that's a fun fact for you there. Uh, but the longest Scrabble word, which we all know, is oxyfenbutazone. We all know it. We all know it. That is the longest yeah, 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 word. That's yeah. common knowledge, right? And purple is 0.05% of that. Oh. And that's amazing, I think. I think red doesn't have that. Go fuck yourself, red. So, uh, that's, that's some stats. I mean, I don't think it really gets better than this, uh, to be completely honest, on why purple is the best. And I kind of don't understand it because we spend all of our life stuck in kind of like these blues and like greens and God forbid even reds. And, and that we just get caught in this spectrum, just this absolute spectrum. Spectrum. There we go, that's better. It's not dramatic enough for me, thank you. Uh, get, you get caught in this spectrum of colours when really the only one that matters is purple. And purple... Purple is... Purple is the best colour in the entire world. And it's a, it's a scientific miracle. I don't know if you guys know about this, but the very act of seeing purple is due to your co the chromosets in your eye looping back on themselves, essentially, so that you can see two opposite ends of the spectrum, red and blue. And it's a scientific miracle. It's magic, quite frankly. It's magic. And I don't understand why we, we spend so much time on this. I don't understand why there's this focus on these other colours. You know, I, I don't understand why there is focus on green. It's not as though the very world that we inhabit is filled with green that would have made us adapt over time to focus on green. And it's definitely not as though the world that we live in is filled with all this wonderful blue liquid that would take the focus. 71% of our world is not made up of this wonderful blue liquid that we need in order to exist that is blue. So why do we care? Now, I sense I've convinced all of you. 
I can hear what <laughs> all of you are saying. You've convinced us with your PowerPoint skills and witty anecdotes. And the big question on all of your faces is, how do we become more purple? It's a fair question. It's a fair question. Uh, Stand-up's all about teaching at the end of the day. And quite, to be completely honest about, about this, we can all be more purple by doing some very simple things. We can knuckle down, we can try hard, we can try and be the best people that we can be. Forget about who you were yesterday, don't compare yourself to other people. Just focus on who you are today and who you are tomorrow, trying to be the best you can be. Because Woo! underneath all of this, at the end of the day, we're all just purple. Even if we don't know it yet, we're all purple. And we just have to focus on being the best us that we can be. <laughs> That and uh, about three gallons of hair dye <laughs> as well. That that wouldn't go amiss. So uh, with that in mind, that's been my first ever TED talk. I'm very pleased, very pleased to do it. <laughs> Give it out to you. Now, I'm going to be honest to you, Canterbury, coming from a colourblind man, that entire set was very yeah, offensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Another colourblind yeah, man in the room? So did I a thing. <laughs> Don't you mean you couldn't see a thing? <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> that happened, Reese. That interaction. What's your name? I'm Jack. Jack, what do you do? Marketing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And who do you market for? No one, a student. You're a, you, you mark it, you study it, well, right? You try to study it. What do you mean, try to study it? I procrastinate everything and then force myself to do assignments very poorly. Well, Woo! Nine and a half grand, everyone. Nine and a half grand. A year. Thanks for that clarification. I think the majority of the university students in the room. But I've already done that. But it's okay. It's okay. Thanks for clarifying. Just in case you know, I'm not doing my job correctly, like you tried to do earlier, you fuck tar. If you do a three year course, think about that. Who would have fucking known, Canterbury? It's not like the tax man's all going to tell me in a couple of years' time, is it? Fuck. I'm sorry, I apologise for my anger, Canterbury. Sorry? So say that again. I said all right, Beaver Town boy. Beaver Town boy. That's what you are. Just because I'm wearing a Beaver Town top. Yeah. Fight! <laughs> 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 so if I'm Beaver Town boy, does that make you Ned Flanders man? Does it? <laughs> I feel like I'm becoming a bit of a weird snubber with these comebacks, eh? Your mum better watch out, fella. Are you? <laughs> Um, are we enjoying our time, Canterbury? Yes! Yeah. Reese, you were waiting for Tommy all night. Was it worth it? <laughs> Brilliant, Canterbury. Uh, frosted tips. Are we still enjoying ourselves? Oh yeah. You're, you're, you blazed up, didn't you, bro? No, I didn't. Yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, all right, fella. <laughs> and what? The Pope's not a Catholic. Um, um, that was that was not a good comeback. Better go to drawing porn on that one. Um, are we ready for our probably our most controversial act of the night? <laughs> yes. Are we ready? Yes. 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 And I tell you what, I'm ready to edit his set out of the YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh no no no! Please, can you bring us make some fucking noise? <laughs> Um, I've said this before, but the name's Negro David. That's, that's oh, nice. yeah. um, before I start, yeah, I actually got permission to to say something. Uh, I did a set here last month, and a few people had they had a few problems with my set. They thought it was too offensive, and my choice of language was apparently not great. Uh, so they complained uh, to Daniel, uh, President. And for that, I would just like to address them right now and say that 
I'm really sorry, man. I'm really, I'm really sorry. I profusely apologize. You know, I wasn't trying to be offensive. Honestly, um, I think I just started panicking. I didn't really prepare to to do well. You know, um, I think. Uh, I, the thing is, I knew I fucked up, right? The, the point where I knew I fucked up is when I probably said, uh, kill the babies. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, well, firstly, I didn't know so many of you loved babies, but then, secondly, yeah, I'd just like to apologize. That's not, that's not who we are. That's, I, that's not who the society you know, represents. I'm not like that, you know. Some of you that have seen my sets in the past, you've known that I don't, I've changed. That last, that last set was kind of different, you know. It was, it was kind of genitalia based, right? <laughs> Lots of genitalia content. Um, and I realized that I should just stick to what I'm good at, which is just talking, talking about my past experiences, you know, so even genitalia based content in the past, and basically speaking about my past experiences. So, that being said, a couple years ago, I had hemorrhoids, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 I did, I did. Who's had hemorrhoids in here? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my hemorrhoid buddy, buddies. Uh, yeah, so I had hemorrhoids. It was a life-changing experience, you know. It was really humbling, kind of scary. How I found out really was... I basically, I was in my A-levels, I, I like basically was in boarding school at the time, and I had a room neighbor, he lived right opposite me, his name was Hugo, he was half Spanish, half English, it's not really important now, but it'll be important later. Um, yeah, and he, he basically sent a snap to our year group chat, everyone that was in the house in our year, of him shitting and being like, I'm in so much pain. And I wasn't phased, I just thought that was normal, right? Like. I mean, I'm lactose intolerant. I have about uh, five bowls of cereal a day with whole milk because I hate myself. <laughs> yeah, so I know what it's like for your bowels to sound like a machine gun. In there, right? So yeah, I was, I was just like, okay. And then the next two, two minutes pass and then he sends another snap of like uh, toilet paper but soaked in blood. Ooh. And you know, we were like, what the fuck? Right? And he went to the hospital, he found out he had hemorrhoids. Internal hemorrhoids causes, it makes you uh, bleed when you shit. Uh, yeah, real pain in the ass. She wanted she Yeah, so he found out he had hemorrhoids and uh, the bleeding continued. It was, it, it continued for like over a week. It was like a heavy flow day every day for him, right? Uh, and, um, yeah, it, it took some while to get getting used to. He got bullied for it, unfortunately. Everyone called him period boy, but you know, I stood I stood by him. He was my friend. He was my friend. He was he lived right across me. I, I basically gave him a hug when he was down uh, down bad, you know, thinking about how he everyone's talking about him being period boy. I comforted him, I stood up for him, I actually told people to stop. Um, then about three days later I woke up and I felt different. I felt different. I woke up, I got out of bed, tried sitting down, and went, oh, okay, something's different in that area, right? I panicked, ran across the hall to see Hugo. You know, I'm like, yo, some shit's happened to me, bro. What did you give me? Because my ass now hurts. It wasn't like this, right? He tells me, Oh man, you just have the hemorrhoids. It's all right. Um, but I, I was still scared by this. I, I thought like, oh, does that mean I'm going to start bleeding, right? Every time I want to take a shit, am I just going to be in pain? Am I going to be crying 24-7? I already know I can't sit down anywhere now, right? Um, so I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to confirm. I'm going to go to the medical center. I'm going to confirm from the doctor. Uh, but if you'd like to just keep this between us. Hugo did not keep this between us, right? <laughs> um, I'm on my way to the medical center later that day in the afternoon, and I, f I found out that apparently we're being called the uh, hemorrhoid hermanos. <laughs> right? Right? True story, true story, true story. Uh, I was offended, but you know what? I was like, let's just see the doctor. I can't rush this. I go to the reception. I tell them my symptoms. They give me that look like, oh, 
Poor child. And they tell me to they tell me to just wait in the waiting area. I wait for about you know forty five minutes. The doctor lets me in. I think his name was Doctor Carl Michael, something like that. Uh, yeah, he lets me in and you know he tells me to take a seat. I look him dead in the eye. He opens my file. He then says, "Oh, actually, you can just remain standing." Right? <laughs> okay, so this is the part I hated. Like, it was just weird doctors and chill moments where, like, he's talking to me about my day. He's asking me, "How's your day? How are you?" And I'm like, "Just tell me to take off my trousers." I know how this goes, right? Right? Like, I know what's going to happen. You know what's going to happen. You know, I know what's going to happen. So we might as well just get along with it. Like, why, why are we asking these questions? So eventually, he turns out to be a freak, tells me to bend over, you know, put my hands on the hospital bed. And, you know, he examines, he looks. I'm, I'm, I'm actually feeling a sense of relief, mainly because he told me to stop clenching. But like, he, you know, I'm like, you know what? I'm actually seeing the doctor. The same day I, I had the symptoms. This must be a good thing. Um, and you know, I just thought he was taking a look till I heard the sound of his glove, you know, his glove just strap onto his hands and I immediately turned back and I'm like, yo, 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 yo. He started examining the hemorrhoid. It was an external hemorrhoid. Uh, wow, I feel like I have so much power in this room. <laughs> <laughs> My trauma, you know, this is actually, this is like, fuck therapy, this is it. <laughs> yeah, so he's, he's, he's touching up, he's feeling up, right, and uh, yeah, and I'm trying my best to, just not to moan, right, like I'm just trying to, like, I'm just like, cause, like this, this experience is different for me, it's different for me, I'm like, yo, I, I'm pretty sure when I said yo, I went like four octaves higher, like, I was confused. So he heard all of this and he told me to put out my trousers, brought out my file and he said, I think the issue is you have a sensitive anus. Yeah, I knew that. I knew that. You just touched me up. You know, I knew that. Um, but yeah, he basically just told me to just be more careful um, when wiping, stop, stop eating five bowls of cereal a day and all of that. But um, yeah, I'm making jokes about hemorrhoids, but it's not, it's not really a joke. It's, it's very serious. A lot of people... They get hemorrhoids multiple times. I've, I've been lucky, I've only had it once. You know, a lot of people, they tend to continue to get hemorrhoids. You know, it's not a funny situation. You know, I, still, I still have very vivid dreams. Uh, very vivid, intense dreams. Um, it always starts off with me in a field and, um, and I'm just in so much pain. I'm wailing, I'm screaming and then the scenery changes, and I'm in a hospital. There's a hospital bed. Uh, there's Carmichael. Um, and, uh, I mean, I don't think I'm allowed to say the rest on YouTube, so. Uh, yeah, that's the end. That's my set. I've been Black Negro, David. Have a Lovely stuff, lovely stuff. Well, we have come to that very unfortunate time in the evening, Canterbury. We've only got one act left tonight. Oh. But don't worry, we're going to be back right here on October. Uh, oh Sometime in October. 12th, maybe? 12th of October, we're going to be back here. Um, again, attempting stand-up. <laughs> Clearly. Um, but yes, Canterbury for one last time. Please stamp your feet for me. Please clap your hands, Catherine. I'm very glad to nice you find out this evening. The one the only you do. Brilliant, Daniel, thank you. You want to twiddle the bit there? <laughs> Velvet. This is a great start. Hi everyone, I'm Evie. I'm going to be doing some songs for you today. This first song is about my best friend. Best friend, this one's for you. Mm. <laughs> my best
best friend's a microwave. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. You either get it or you don't. Um, so an pers important person in my life is my dad. Yes, I know that wasn't a good segue. I don't care. Um, and I was at home recently and um, I could just hear my dad in our like cellar. He was doing some DIY. So all I could hear was just... My dad has nine toes. Um, so I'm going to do one more set, and more than one more set, one more song for you guys. And um, this is actually about me and my boyfriend. Um, too many of you guys know that we're going through a bit of a difficult time at the moment. I don't know if his mom is in the room filming me. Um, uh, he's actually in California, and I'm in Canterbury. Hanging out with you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Who the fuck just shouted Roy? You can. Okay, you can leave now. Um, yeah, he's in uh, California and I'm in Canterbury. Hanging out with you fuckers. I drew the short end of the straw. And uh, as well as having nine toes, apparently, my dad's a judge. Um, Monopoly as a child was fucking traumatic. So. Um, <laughs> To sort out this difficult time, I did the only thing I know how to do, the only thing I was raised how to do, and um, we wrote a contract, and it has 27 clauses, but nothing else rhymes with contract. It's a good thing we remember to include a fine for breach of contract <laughs> and it's the price of a Jaeger bomb because we're too poor for therapy <laughs> although we both could probably use some my boyfriend wrote only one clause and it's to say we're both allowed casual sex with other people although we won't know who's the only one who's going to use that clause. She's oh. in California and I'm in Canterbury. What the fuck would I need that for? Except for having a one night stand with Frosted Tips guys. <laughs> what are you doing after the show? <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding, because to get off with frosted tips, guy, I'd have to travel back to the early 2000s where that hairstyle was last cool. <laughs> Clause number two. We are not allowed to say, I love you. I won't love him anyway Cause then he'd sound like a massive twat Clause number seven I refuse to send him mail Do I look like a fucking Victorian? Plus the Royal Mail sucks ass Clause number 15 subsection B We're officially on a break did I accidentally summon David Schwimmer? <laughs> no, I think that we're all good. Pause number, the last one, because I'm bored of this song. When he gets back, we'll get back together. Let's hope California water makes his dick grow. <laughs> I gotta go, I think my friend's here. I fucking love contracts. <laughs> Are you okay, Helga? <laughs> <laughs> you 
Got a disapproving nod from Helga. <laughs> Give it up for Helga for being such a good sport. <laughs> Um, please, one last time, do it up for our bar staff the evening. We've gained a couple. Please, please, no money. Yeah. Haven't they done a really good job getting you not absolutely shit faced? <laughs> Clearly, someone over here has had one too many to have. Brilliant, lovely stuff. And of course, give yourselves a round of applause. Can we? You've been insane tonight. <laughs> and I have just received the very sad news that it's currently 1-1. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. But uh, we, oh. it's alright, we won't play on that. We won't play on that. Um, so what we'll do instead is we'll give it up for our act one more time. Shall we? So give it up for one the only Scott Fissenden! you have it in your hearts uh, as you walk out the door tonight to put a little bit of money in our bucket.